inviting the company into one of the premier shopping sites on the Internet. His letter of resignation mentions the turmoil that was caused by his admission last month of a bizarre series of events involving a Russian spy, the FBI, and what he describes as a destructive deep state within that institution. Here now to explain it all for himself is Patrick Byrne. Patrick, great to see you. I'm all ears. Why did you resign? Well, first, I'm going to talk about Overstock. T Tuesday was my 20th, was our 20th anniversary. We just had a big party. Everything's in a perfect place. It's for a perfect time for me to resign. The, you know, on the blockchain side, the killer app of blockchain is security tokens. Our company there, T0, was just voted uh, in an internet thing. 61% said it's the most likely to win that race. We've got 22 other blockchain properties we're involved in, and they are the leaders in their respective disruptive areas. The retail business has returned to EBITDA profitability last quarter. Everything's, uh, you know, I, once I stopped trying to chase the monsters who lose $3 billion and said, we're just going to focus on being this technological masterpiece and make money. And we have the, I think we have the most successful, the most numbers of pro gap profitable years of any B2C e-commerce company I know of. I really do. And we did it on a dollop of the capital so, that everyone else had. So all of that's in a perfect place. Here, uh, but there's this other issue. And no, I'm not getting chased out. And the board, this is my, me ejecting. And I have to. I have to because I've been warned that if I come forward to America, that the apparatus of Washington is going to grind me into a dust. And that's going to happen, and I have to get that away from the company. It's only right. Why is it going to grind me into a dust? Uh, I can tell that what I – you caught me off guard last time, David, and I can tell what I said didn't – some sparkies out there, they didn't quite get the joke. When I say that I know about the Russian and Clinton investigation, this is what I mean. Uh, because 17 years ago I helped them crack a murder, and they knew me, and I helped them been on Wall Street 12 years ago – they knew me, and they called me in 2015, 2016 to assist in something. And I didn't know who the orders came from, but I assisted. It's the, some very honorable federal agents and, and very honorable people. But they named some names, and, uh, well, they didn't name the names. That's it. I didn't know who it came from. And I, did some, I took some orders that seemed a little fishy uh, in 2015, 2016. Last summer, watching television, mm -hmm. I figured out the name of who sent me the orders. And this has all now been confirmed to me. The name of the man who sent me the orders was a guy named Peter Strzok. Oh, so my goodness. Got it? A piece? Yeah. So this is going to be quite a whirlwind, and I have to. It's only that's right. huge news, Peter. That that hasn't been uh, revealed so far as I know no. as of yet. But that's no. this is Peter Struck. Struck. So are you working with the attorney general uh, in his investigation? Let me be clear. I'm not working with anybody. I am. I want to spend the rest of my life. Uh, the last time I talked to federal officers five years uh, five months ago, and I explained everything to them uh, between April fifth and thirtieth over a course of seven hours, and then I dis disappeared. Uh, I, Bill Barr, there's going to be a, scra a, a sculpture of granite of this guy somewhere. I've been sitting on this stuff for three years. I couldn't come forward until there was rule of law in this country. I wasn't going to afford when this guy, Jeff Sessions. You know, Truman said of an opponent I could carve a better man out of a banana. That's how Americans should feel about Jeff Sessions. We, find, we have rule of law, and I came forward to them in April. I believe what, I've, what I understand, and I don't want to get it any federal way. I want to disappear, and let, but there are other whistleblowers from within the federal bureaucracy with similar stories. And, and, and I can tell you the bottom line, and again, people didn't get, seem to get it last time, the bottom line is, this is the big cover-up, there was political espionage conducted against Hillary Clinton, against Hillary Clinton, Mark Rubio, uh, Cruz, and Donald Trump. And this isn't a theory of mine. This is some political position. I was in the room when it happened. I was mm -hmm. part of it. I thought I was doing law enforcement. Sorry. Uh, hey, uh, Patrick, uh, Gary Smith, uh, uh, welcome to the show. And uh, I hope the rest of your uh, uh, post-CEO career goes well. Uh, question for first of all, your story sounds like it should be a, a, a movie for theatrical release. So yeah, I want to know who's going to be playing you. But more importantly, Denzel you Washington. I'll cooperate with anyone who can get Denzel Washington <laughs> to play me. Sounds good. You mentioned during the break that you're going to have a rough uh, few months. Uh, I'm curious as to why you said that and what you see happening in the next few weeks and months. Do you have legal counsel? And what what do you think will happen with you and with your story? Well, this is extraordinarily. Well, who the heck knows? This is. This is quite an ambiguous situation. But the issue is, I realized that, that these orders I got came from Peter Strzok. And as I put together things, I, I, know, I, I know much more than I should know, and it's right to keep silent. Every, this country's gone nuts. And especially for the last year, when I've realized what I know, every time I see one of these things, somebody drives 600 miles to gun down 20 strangers in a mall, I guess I feel a bit responsible. So I have to come forward. I went to see my rabbi, and you know, you know who my rabbi is, right? Who's my rabbi? Who's my rabbi, David? Uh, tell us, tell us, Patrick. It's, it's this guy in Omaha, and he said, Patrick, you come forward. He's, he said, uh, you can't let this sit with the feds. Let the feds do their job. You have to come forward to the American people. So I am. I never heard of the guy. 
I only figured out last summer who, who had sent me these, these requests. It was a guy named Peter Strzok. And he was doing it on behalf of three officials. I'm just identifying them as X, Y, and Z. I've identified, they were named to me, and I've identified them to, the, uh, to law enforcement. I believe there's a massive federal investigation that is going to turn up that there was political espionage conducted uh, through a number of different venues against Hillary Clinton and against Rubio, Cruz, and Trump. I know for a fact. I know other people who were involved. That's what really happened. And my rabbi has said, you can't go another, you have to do this right now. People are killing each other in America. That's, this is my sorely cream is people <laughs> or whatever. That's the pa- truth. And I, Patrick, I'm just curious, you know, um, I'm sure this was a very difficult thing for you to come to terms with and to deal with. And there's so much at risk for you personally. Um, how do you see your life unfolding after this? I mean, you gave up your CEO position. I, I understand why you have to do what's right for the shareholders. But making a decision to get involved in this has, um, you know, cost you a lot. Well... Well, what can I say? I guess well, my, uh, uh, that's not the main event. And I talked about that. And he actually said, you know, the analysis here, Sir Patrick, is what's good for the country. It's not what's good for you. It's not what's good for this or that. It's what's good for the country. You have to do this. So I did. Uh, my life, I, if you want to I know what, well, uh, I have literally been warned that Washington, I was warned about nine months ago, if you come forward to Washington, D.C., everybody in Washington, D.C. is going to be, you're spending the rest of your life trying to grind you into dust. And I'll tell you something else that will come up. I was, I believe I was offered a billion dollar bribe to keep quiet. So I was, in a sense, so, we'll leave that uh, to the federal investigators. Uh, if you way, want to know what Patrick, my life, what oh, yeah. I want to know what my life's going to be, listen to Warren Zevon, Money, Guns, and Lawyers. That's my life. Yeah. Patrick, uh, yeah. you, you, you mentioned money, your so rabbi. I just, I, without revealing too much, uh, were you talking about a man named Buffett? Yeah, yeah. Warren Buffett, who, who we should mention, so by Patrick, the way, uh, you work you worked with Warren Buffett. He, he acted as a mentor for you. Uh, have you been taking advice from him on a regular basis now about all that's happened to you? Just once on this, I've, I was one of the great terrible ones in my life as I met him. <laughs> part of it, part of, for being for uh, it's, it's, it's understandable through all. Patrick, when uh, you think of all you've been through, 13, but just finish. Go ahead. I met him when I was thirteen, and he's been. We, I call him Rabbi. And he'll call me. He'll leave a message. Joe Patrick is Rabbi's calling, and we have that. He's that's probably the right way to describe our relationship. And like, although neither of us are Jewish, and and uh, he gives so, advice, and he. I went to see him in John June twentieth, I think it was, and he told me you have to do this. I've been trying to do it gracefully this summer. And anyway, go ahead. So Patrick, go ahead. You're, you're the CEO of a company you, of a company that you started. You have a board. You have shareholders. You've got employees. And I just got to ask you, why were you involved in any of this? Whatever any of this is, and I don't really know how to make heads or tails of it. Although I'm sure it's going to be okay, fodder okay. for every conspiracy theory known to man. But why? Why? I mean, it, it, you're also a CEO, and you have a fiduciary responsibility. You could have just said, "Look, this is not my lane. I'm not going there." And that's not an appropriate division of labor. That would have been an absolutely honorable and legitimate thing to say. Well, I'm a citizen, too. I'm a flag-waving hippie like Jerry Garcia. I'm a citizen, and I think that as a citizen, we have duties, too. And, and if everybody helped out a little bit when they had a chance, life would be much easier. I've helped out twice in my life. Once when a friend of mine got murdered. I helped a guy named Brian Williams, and if you Google his name of mine, you find the story. When I was murdered, I helped the feds bring the murder to justice, and it was my honor to help them bring the murder to justice. And I helped them back 05 to 2010 take down Wall Street. And both of the, both catching my friend's murder and taking on Wall Street were consistent with my values, and, and uh, it was my honor to help the men in black uh, then. And it was just this third time they came to me, and I got some requests. I didn't know that who, the hell, who the hell it came from. And uh, it was fishy. And three years later, I'm watching television, and I realized who it was. It was Peter Strzok and Andy McCabe, and uh, that's who these orders came from. Hello, my name is Patrick Byrne. I'm the founder and CEO of Overstock.com, and I am a longtime crypto enthusiast. Yeah, and are you interested in all uh, everything cryptocurrency, or are you really interested in the blockchain? Or where do you separate the two? Well, I'm not really interested in cryptocurrencies per se. Although, in general, although I guess there's nothing wrong with me saying Overstock. There's an open source project of which I'm, I'm really letting something big out of the bag here. I'll tell you. But there's an open source project called Ravencoin, which Overstock has put millions of dollars. Uh, into into teams, we have people contributing to this open source project. We think this coin actually has quite a future. It's about it's Bitcoin, but a thousand times more energy efficient. And there's other real interesting virtues to it. So Ravencoin. But other than that, I stay out of the cryptocurrency game. I'm building the. the uh, we're focusing on applications of this technology and not just betting on coins themselves. And is that the primary purpose of Ravencoin is to be more energy efficient version of some of these other cryptocurrencies? That's, I'd say that's just, that's the first feature it brings to the world, but I hear from the open source community and on the message boards, I, I know what they are working on, and it seems, it's really quite a, I, I think it has, it was launched January 3rd, and it's as this open source project, and I think it has more, as I heard, the number of, of miners who are now 
working on it are it's it is spread faster than any number of miners of any coin introduced. It's really quite a phenomenon this Bitcoin coin. So and what's nice is democratize. Yeah, it, what happens is you know, all these coins, like Bitcoin and such, are built on there's a processor that's solving mathematical problems and. It's possible to build chips that specialize in just that problem. And so you really can't, with your home computer, you're not going to mine any Bitcoin anymore uh, unless you have this dedicated ASIC chip. Well, the Ravencoin was designed so you can't do that. It's ASICs resistant. And that's because the problem that you solve keeps flipping randomly amongst a bunch, among, bunch of class of problems. Anyway, you can't solve it efficiently with an ASICs chip, which means it redemocratizes mining. Anyone can download this software, and you don't have an advantage by having this big mining warehouse in uh, China.